Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Balancing Act. We have a great show for you today. We're so glad you're here. I'm Julie Moran. And I'm Olga Villaverde. You know, the pen is mightier than the sword. I love that saying. I do, too. That expression might be outdated, but today uh -huh. we're looking at an innovative use of the pen in the digital realm. It'll unleash your inner artist. Oh, I like the Did way you like that. Did you like that? We weave. Yes. Plus, we'll discover a healthy nutritional supplement that grows in the rich soil of the Dead Sea. Huh. And it's also making the world a better place, one tree at a time. Lots of interesting things to discuss, and the Balancing Act starts right now. We weave. <laughs> You may have seen our recent segment on Dead Sea Moringa, a nutrient-rich supplement grown in the dense soil of the Dead Sea region of the world. Now today we're going to talk about how this ancient plant is helping cure hunger in Africa. And back with me is Kurt Landry, he's CEO of Dead Sea Moringa. And welcome, we are so glad to have you back. Julie, thank you so much for having us, and I'm really enjoying these segments. Well, I am too, and amazed every time you leave the set. But today is part two of our special, and I want to know why this nutritional supplement is so special, because there's so many sources of vitamins and minerals in here. Julie, I'll just give you an example. Dead Sea Moringa has seven times the vitamin C of an orange, uh. three times the potassium of a banana, three times the iron of spinach, four times the calcium of milk, two times the protein of milk, four times the vitamin A of carrots, three times the vitamin E of almonds. It's native to the Himalayan mountains and it's very safe, there's no side effects, and when you grow it in the mineral rich soil of the Dead Sea, you have a true superfood and nature's multivitamin. Nature's multivitamin, I love that. How did you become interested in Dead Sea Moringa? Because I think this is so new to so many people. Well, when we found out the mineral rich soil of the Dead Sea would produce a ability for us to deal with malnutrition in the world, it brought me back to an experience we had in Togo, Africa. My wife and I were there on a missions trip and we saw a child one afternoon as they were transporting us to the stadium to speak. And this child was under a bench, a, a bus bench, where a man was eating a sandwich. And as the crumbs were breaking off the sandwich, this very young, year and a half, two-year-old little girl had trained herself to bend down and stick her tongue out and pick up the crumbs without picking up the dirt. Wow. Right then, I, I said, I have to do something about malnutrition in the world. And that's wow. where it started for that's me. Where it, that's so great. And so what have you been working on that you can really share with us? Uh, we have been working in Togo, Africa. We started by planting moringa trees in a village just outside of Lome. We have three acres and we thought, is this really gonna make a difference? This is a village with 5,000 people. It transformed their economy, their hope, and it's having a great effect on their health. Oh my gosh, Kurt, tell me more about Trees for the Future and how this connects to what you're doing. We, we came up with a program where we want to expand this just outside of Togo. Trees for the Future has a vision and a mission to plant trees, changing lives. They, they have planted 93 million trees in 20 countries since wow. 1989. <laughs> And we have a program where you buy one and you get one tree. So for every bottle purchased of Dead Sea Moringa, uh, Trees for the Future will plant one tree. And that seems like a good balanced way to this problem of malnutrition in these countries that need help. Oh, I love that. Buy one, get one tree. I mean, that's a great slogan. <laughs> so are the local farmers working the land or how does that work? Yes, they work the land and we have people there that teach them how to grow and harvest the Moringa. You know what? I'm just impressed with the work. I'm impressed with the vitamin. This is amazing. I'm really looking forward to part three of this series. It's <laughs> going to be fascinating. Every time you come on the set, I'm fascinated. So thanks so much for sharing your good work with us. Thank you, Julie. And if you want to know more, log on to thebalancingact.com. You can also follow us on Facebook as well. Well, all 
of us are taking photos these days, capturing special moments with our cameras or cell phones, and maybe you have some photos that you'd really like to transform into memorable keepsakes, but aren't sure to, about how to go about doing it. Well, on today's segment, we want to inspire you to unleash your creative abilities, and we're going to show you how you can transform a favorite picture into your very own unique work of art. And you don't have to be an accomplished artist to do it. And with me this morning is artist Heather Michelle Chen from Corel and good morning Heather it's so great to have you here. Good morning Julie I'm so excited to this be here. This is to me an exciting segment and they say a picture is worth a thousand words and you'd say right. Absolutely. So we're talking about transforming photos into paintings and I know a lot of our viewers are watching thinking oh I don't have the talent to do that but you say not so right? No anybody can paint it's so easy with these two tools. I'm using Corel Painter X3 software in conjunction with the Wacom Intuos Pro digital pen and touch tablet. And together, they give you a really natural way of enabling that inner artist to come out. And everything we see on display here is so beautiful and created by you and using this pen that I want you to tell me about. And just show me how I can get started. Sure. Well, I've got the Wacom Intuos Pro pen and touch tablet, and I'm using Corel Painter X3. Now I've got my underpainting tab set up. I'm going to click on Smart Blur, a little bit of saturation, and I'm going to go to File Quick Clone. And now I'm going to make sure that Auto Painting is selected, Smart Stroke Painting is selected, and I'm going to take my Impressionist brush and I'm just going to hit Play. So you can see that Painters do an auto painting feature for us. It's selecting areas of contrast and then filling it in with that brush's stroke style. So when we get finished, I'm going to click on Restoration with my art pen, click on Soft Edge Cloner Brush, and then lightly, smoothly go over her face in areas that I want to bring back that photographic realism. Wow. So you can see how responsive it is. Now when I'm finished and ready to sign, I'm going to click on my dry ink brush, get a fun color, and then I'm going to sign my name. That is, an, I mean, really, that's amazing and beautiful. And I see what you mean about how easily the pen responds and, and your, when it's in your hand, it's not like a mouse. Absolutely. Anybody can paint. I want to show you this bottom segment here was done with the mouse. Got it. You get a solid pressure point, so you don't get any of that responsiveness. Yet, taking our dry ink brush and our Intuos pen, Ooh. You see how it's nice and smooth in areas? That's from the lighter pressure, and yet it's much more solid in areas when I'm really pressing down. So you get 2,000 levels of pressure sensitivity with this pen and touch tablet, and it makes for beautiful natural brush strokes. It does. So it's as easy as drawing on a piece of paper, and it responds very well to your pressure and speed. But on the bottom, you have a line drawn with a mouse. So you can see it's only one level of pressure sensitivity, and it's like drawing with a rock. You really right. can't create with that. You mentioned free online resources because I know if I looked at this, I wouldn't know what to do with it. But tell me about where we can find those free online resources. Well, first you can go to corel.com forward slash the balancing act, and there are so many free online videos and tutorials. So Wacom has been around for about 30 years creating the top of the line tablets, and Painter and Corel have been around in, in the top of the digital art line for about 20 years. So there's some great resources. It's amazing what you can do. You just have to have a little creativity and watch there yourself you go. paint. That's exciting. And you know, prior to this, someone, I didn't even do it, gave you a picture of my family. And that yes. you performed your artistic magic on that, yeah. I think. I, is it on set somewhere? Oh, oh my gosh. I am, oh, you. Yeah. I'm like going to tear you? up here. This is so beautiful. Thank you. I can't thank you enough for that. You're this so welcome. So, you know, now my children are going to want this tablet. Yes, they're going to want the pen. Yeah. They're, they're going to want to go on here and create beautiful images like that. I can't thank you enough. I am I'm truly amazed and awed right now. Um, this is quite inspiring. And, and I, to think that anyone can use this and do this Absolutely. is just a wonderful gift that I think you're giving out to all of those people that want artistic talent but aren't quite the artist you are. Thank you so much for coming here today. Thank you for having me. It was great to have you here. 
Oh, and to learn more about these wonderful creative tools and to take advantage of special offers from Corel and Wacom, our viewers, all you have to do is just go to thebalancingact.com and you're feeling artistic, send us a note on Facebook at Facebook forward slash The Balancing Act fans. Today we're enjoying a classic tradition of tea and shortbread cookies with a very special twist, shall we say. Celebrity chef and cookbook author Sarah Moulton is with us this morning, as well as Jackie Walker, part of the fourth generation Walker family, producers of the famous Walker shortbread cookies that we have all grown up with. Good morning. Hi. I'm hi. so glad you're here. <laughs> well, last time you made me a va va voom recipe food. Now it's va va voom dessert food oh, and yes. cookies. Oh, yes. It's tea time. <laughs> tea time. Mm -hmm. You really must have a lot of memories growing up with tea and cookies in your family. Tell me about it. Shortbread has always been a huge part of my life since I was a little kid. And my dad used to come home from work with all the new product developments and gather us all around the kitchen table. And we do a little taste paneling. So my dad really enjoyed the input from us and we loved being asked our opinions. So and it was you, always really fun. You have memories of I your should, family? Well, actually I've developed a dessert in honor of my mom and we <gasps> had tea and cookies every wow. afternoon. Thanks, Sarah. Yes, and so this is um, a couple of different ice creams. It's sort of a hot cold dessert. You put hot double chai tea on top of the ice creams. And my favorite oh, of all the Walker shortbread, the ginger stem biscuits. Yeah. And my mother loves uh, crystallized ginger also. God but I come her. home every afternoon after in high school, and you know, like around three or four, mom would have cookies and tea waiting. Oftentimes it was Walkers because we just loved them. And she would listen to everything bad or good that had happened that day. I love it. And tell me the history. I mean, how did it start? It started a long time ago, over 100 years ago. <laughs> My great grandfather had a small bakery, small village bakery in the highlands of Scotland, and really it just developed from there. The bakery grew, everyone loved the products, and then we soon started producing all these wonderful biscuits. And that's the history. I love your accent, by the way. Yes. Okay, so tell me what we're going to be making. All right, uh, well, so that is one dessert that's really fun, and but I've got a blueberry tart, mm. and I use the Walker's vanilla yeah. shortbread for the crust. So the tart shell has three ingredients. You're looking at them, 12 Walker shortbread, vanilla cookies, uh, four ounces of almond paste and one egg. And I've already, and you just do it in a food processor, I've ground up the cookies and the almond paste in here. Okay, so that's all ground up. And then after you do that, you just add a lone egg and miraculously the whole thing comes together. Wow. Okay, I'm just gonna start it so I don't make a terrible mess. It takes a minute, but eventually it comes together in a ball. See, it's getting very thick. Look at that. Yeah. And it's, it's like a nice paste. And what you do is you take this and you smush it into the bottom of a tart tin. And then you chill it for a couple hours because it's very soft, or just an hour. And that's what it looks like after it's chilled. You see how I smushed it? Good thing to do with kids. You know, <laughs> I told you, my kids would love to smush, smush, Play doh. <laughs> okay, but then the way we bake it is called blind baking. So we're putting in some foil, and these are pie, well, this is rice. You can use pie weights, which are little metal guys, or rice or dried beans. You put it in a 350 degree oven, 20 minutes, like this, I've five minutes, seen that. you take it out, and then you end up with a pre-baked crust. Oh, how you fabulous. You see, and this way it's nice and crisp. We don't want to lose that yummy crispness mm. of the shortbread. And so now here's the filling. Very quickly, I'll take you through it. I got some blueberries, cornstarch, water, and sugar in here, and you cook it till it pops and looks like this. Isn't mm -hmm. that gorgeous? Oh, the color. Um, and then we add a little bit of lemon rind. I love lemon. By the way, you could use regular, any of the Walker's regular shortbread flavors, shapes, or the lemon is great in this dough too. And some lemon juice. Okay. I learned so much with her. I make really simple desserts. This may not seem so simple, but it really is. The ingredients are, you know, just, you have to chill and stuff. And then we add raw blueberries to it. So we've got the cooked and the raw. And um, so you've got the nice crunch and the cooked is like the glue. And who says that's not healthy? Antioxidants all the way. I know, and then you stir it up a little more than I did. It goes right into oh, the yeah. prepared crust. And you can even put it in hot because we crisped our um, shell, it's, it's all is good. And then you can either eat it right away <laughs> or you can chill it, it sets up even more. So you've got to try my blueberry tart. Wow, I gotta tell you, not only is it beautiful, I know it's gonna taste delicious, but you know, it really looks like it took a lot of time and ingredients, and it really doesn't. Not at all. Sarah. And you know the thing we didn't talk about is how 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 simple the cookies are. I mean, what goes into these cookies? Well, they're all natural ingredients. It's just four ingredients: butter, sugar, flour, and a pinch of salt. So all natural, no preservatives. 
And I know you've got lots of recipes to offer too. Yes, they're all on the um, walkersus.com website. Oh gosh, thank there you, you go. so much for sharing that history. Thank you. God Thanks. bless your entire family. Thank you as always. You always have the best recipes well, I had for so me. so much fun playing with this. And to find out more about Walker's shortbread line of products, please visit the website and that's walkersus.com. Walkersus.com. This is sponges. Thanks so much for joining us today and spending part of your morning with us. You want to learn more? Head to our website, thebalancingact.com, for all the insider info. We're also on Facebook and Twitter, so we want you to look us up, follow us. There's a lot of good info there. And until next time, remember to always find, find your balance. balance. So long, everybody.